Hello, welcome to a very windy but surprisingly dry Devon for what I think is probably the first video of 2020. Um, first things I want to say is I hope you're well. These are troubling times for the entire world. So I want you to stay safe and healthy and out of trouble. Um, but the lockdown has given me an opportunity to get the fleet together because I can't do much else with them at the moment. Um, so I thought this was an idea or an opportunity to assemble 10 of the fleet Three aren't in this picture for reasons that will become clear in a bit but these are these are 10 of the cars on the what I thought was 12 strong fleet but it's actually 13 so it gets to something when you forget how much tat you own but this is the first time that I've ever seen the fleet lined up like this uh, there is a big beige hole or big, there would be a massive great beige motorhome in this um, in another situation but she's in lockdown in storage can't get her at the moment and there's two Citroens missing, the AX and the ZX, but we'll come on to those in a bit. Um, but this is assembled in date of purchase order, so earliest all the way through to newest or most recent. And some of you will recognize the beautiful 200 pound Safran, if I can zoom in, if I can work my camera, which I can't. There you are, the beautiful Safran. Um, she was the most recent addition. And what's interesting is if you there's a sort of line in the sand because I used to have quite expensive tastes but when you get to here so to the right of the Megane all of those cost less than 500 pound each so on the Megane was quite extravagant that cost 500 the Clio cost 400 which was 400 pound too much the 100 pound Laguna the 200 pound 406 coupe the 300 pound Camry and the 200 pound Safran so I thought we'd just do a quick 10 minute video going through each car in order of purchase starting with the most recent so the first one you can see looking resplendent is the Safran this one cost 200 pounds purchased from Clapham at the end of last year very close to Christmas actually and I think if I'm honest right now probably my favorite purchase this car is, is tremendous there are a few issues that I've discovered since owning it. I think we bought it four days before Christmas, drove home for Christmas in it. There are a few issues. She leaks like a sieve, despite me clearing out the drain covers. She does leak, but she's wonderful. And she's a beautiful car to drive. And I think she's worth, well, is she, is she worth more than 200 pound? You tell me, answer on the postcard, didn't use an address, but I think she's worth every penny of what I paid for her. And um, she's come out well. I think last time I videoed her, she hadn't been waxed. And she's had, had, had a bit of a wax. She's looking good. And I don't want to be honest, one of my favourite views on this car is that front wing there. That is one of my favourite views of the car. I have very strange taste. The other favourite view I've got of this car, this is very much a personal lockdown, nothing else to do video, so bear with me. Please indulge me. I think that looks fabulous. That is a proper, proper Ronin style front view. I really love it. It still hasn't got its yellow fogs. But yeah, the 200 pounds of Fran is still going strong. And I can still use it to go to the shops in, which I'll be doing at some point this week. Uh, not, just clean the interior up, nothing too major. Uh, but that is the... Oh, no, no, how many of these are going to be in the wrong position as I go through? Apologies. The £200. So Fran, so she's a good car. Very good car. Moving on to the purchase I bought, I think three weeks before the Safran, is the £300 Camry. Since you last saw her, she's had an MOT. She passed with a couple of advisories. Um, she needs a drive shaft, which is quite expensive. Actually, the drive shaft's another 300 quid on top of the price I paid for it. So there you go. So that sort of adds up to a 600 pound car, plus the MOT, 650. So she's all in. She's going to be less than 750 quid, including the MOT. Um, but yeah, the, the MOT tester says it's one of the cleanest cars he's seen, which is quite nice on an R Edge Camry. She's also had a full set of Continentals. She's had a new set of tyres, which they were they were getting old. So I dug deep and got a set of Contis. Um, she's fabulous. I love the engine on this thing. Um, plans, well, get rid of the tow bar, get the drive shaft sorted and just enjoy her because she's such an enjoyable car. Such an enjoyable car to drive. And um, yeah, very pleased with that. It's a car I wanted to own for 10 years. I've known this car for 10 years and I always said, if it comes up for sale, I'll have it. So that's the, that's the Camry. Moving on. To what the last owner called beautiful and you can't hardly argue with that can you this is the the 200 pound Peugeot 406 coupe I rescued from the 
from the uh, the border of Exmoor. So this this was low loaded down. It's got a few faults, not least the fact that I haven't had a chance to MOT or do anything with us yet. She's had a wash, she's had a flower clean, and she's looking well. Even in this condition, she's easily the most beautiful car I own. I just think actually one of the most beautiful cars ever made. I mean that side view is just stunning. Just a stunning car. I didn't go inside the Camry but you don't need to see that do you? Yeah you do don't you? You want to see inside the Camry I know you do. Look hang on. Traditional Japanese American style bong to tell you your doors open which is nice but yeah she's lovely. Uh, but this half of me well one of the plan was this year before lockdown was to send her to an MOT place and just find out what's wrong with her find out a complete list of everything that's wrong with her she's going to need new brakes she needs, she needs a new alternator I know that uh, there's going to be lots of little issues to sort out but even driving up and down the track which we can do because we have a little, little track coming up to our house she's um she's fabulous she's fabulous so yeah that's the I, can't, I think it was 100 pound 150 I think 150 pound 406 coupe so three cars plus Erica or sorry Elaine Bage the um the motorhome they were the three cars of 2019 plus the Bage motorhome which we'll come on to at the end the year before that 2018 I invested heavily in a 100 pound Laguna and this has been remarkable it's currently off the road without an MOT it needs an ABS pump which is something I'm going to be doing in lockdown. Um, but she went, she had nothing wrong. She had one, one advisory at the last MOT. I think I bought her with nine months MOT for 100 quid. And despite what everyone says, it's been absolutely reliable. It's been an absolutely fantastic car. And it does everything you want an estate car to do. It's spacious, it's got a split tailgate, which is a win in my book. It's also really light and airy, which is something you don't see in modern estate cars. Massive sunroof lots of glass it's just a lovely lovely family car i love this car we'll never sell it although although if the freelance income drops in drops out that will change moving on it feels like a rubbish version of chris harris top gear thing doesn't it moving on to the misbehaving clio baccarat uh, she's been endless trouble um uh, the worst decisions i've made that's probably the worst so it's a kind of a love-hate relationship because I absolutely adore the look of this thing. I absolutely adore the way she drives. I absolutely adore the idea of a luxury Clio. I mean, that is a stunning view. I love that. Uh, she's been nothing but trouble. She's had, well, she's had everything. I mean, what could go wrong in a Clio pretty much has gone wrong. She had an entire new brake, she had a new head gasket. She had a new alternator, a new starter motor. Uh, you name it, she's had it. And she's still not right. So. In the next video, I'll show you how we've managed to solve, or well, not solve, or get around the electrical issue, but we'll come on to that at another time. So those were the cars, the two Renaults were bought in 2018 for a combined cost of 500 quid. And that one was the better of the two in terms of purchase. This one, the Megan Coupe, if you remember, she was bought from Dorset when we rescued three goats from the, um, from the curry house. So she, she can come with it, we had to pay extra. But she's been fabulous, 500 quid. She sailed through every MOT, maybe a couple of advisories, but nothing major. Um, and this is used for dog transport, as you can see in there. And do you know what? Again, I think that is a lovely piece of design. I think that's aged beautifully. Don't mind saying it. And um, can I just drop a little bit of spam? French tat stickers are now in the shop. Please buy them because it might keep the blog going in these troubled times. There are other stickers I could show you actually. There you go. And there's the other petrol blog sticker which is in the shop. And I haven't got the tofuery sticker on any of the cars yet, that will change. Um, but I'm quite pleased with the French tat sticker. There is a window sticker version of it as well, as you can see. Um, yeah, very pleased with those. Anyway, moving back, showing a few bums. It's like a really rubbish National Trust car park circa 1990 well circa 2000 do you know what though i don't mind saying it this makes me happy seeing my fleet of us of cars i've assembled over 10 years makes me happy so there there's a megan she gets used in all weathers dog in the back horse feed goat feed in the back um and she never well she does she has let us down because she's a Renault, but still love her 
and then we move on to you know they say never know they say never go back and probably shouldn't have gone back but when this came up for sale again i had to buy it it's the corrado i originally bought bought it from a elderly gentleman in near honiton whose wife sadly passed away it took him a year to pluck up the courage to sell it and um, i remember taking it to the volkswagen dealer in exeter volkscraft um, drop, drop him a line if you need any work on your volkswagen and he said it's one of the cleanest volkswagens he's ever worked on just before i sold it took it back to him i think it must be two years ago now and said can you tell me everything that's wrong with this car which you should never say to a mechanic and the list was well a page of a4 so it's been left in the garage ever since while i i say save up the funds but then since then yeah i have a problem i have a problem so since then i bought those which i could have spent the money on the corrado um i will come on to the next video i show you everything that's wrong with that car but she is lovely she is well if anyone's driven a corrado vr6 will tell you it's a it's a joy to drive again again what a fabulous piece of design has volkswagen ever designed or built a better looking car than the corrado struggling i'm struggling to think beautiful car pretty much standard the only change is the previous owner or the previous owner i sold it to not the original owner put some leather seats on it which are lovely one day i'll get around to doing the door cards but yeah can't beat an original un untouched corrado obviously with a working spoiler moving on moving on claudia schiffer my zara vts took me i can't remember i think i said in the last video i'm gonna take i think it was at least three years of watching for a phase one uh, phase one zara vts in claudia schiffer yellow to come up eventually this one came up and i bought it within 10 minutes of it coming on ebay i think i think i paid 1200 quid for it which do you know what is a lot of money for one of these but with forty thousand miles on the clock it was either that or watch it get ripped down for a 205 engine transplant and i wasn't prepared to let that happen again i'm a sucker for this design it's a beautiful piece of work for me i love it i love it you know, there's a little thing that people miss i love the way this is very citron the way the arch sort of just drops over the wheel slightly very very citron i know i'm waffling i mean don't, you've got to indulge my stupid nasty ridiculous tastes again untouched interior dull as ditch water i think quentin wilson described it he's probably got a point there's nothing in there that's going to raise the spirits but the seats are wonderfully comfortable if a little little baggy even at forty-one thousand miles again fabulous car and a big shout out to falcon tires they supply some falcon tires for this car great tires not so great in the wet but brilliant in the dry superb in the dry so yeah and then we move on to a car that's too good for me a car that it came up for sale in the village i remember the lady or girl woman who bought this and i said at the time if you ever sell it you gotta let me know again shouldn't have done that so i ended up buying it it's an original devon car originally sold to a owner in sidmouth he kept it for not long and then it went to the next owner and i think the next owner had it for like 25 years and um, we had it a long time it's getting to the point now where it needs some work and if the freelance income drops out drops out and people are buying cars it'll be this that goes first sadly um so it needs some work first as you can see the the rust at the front has got a little worse at the over the winter period but i can do that myself other than that again she went through an mot almost faultlessly last year she's a fabulous car uh like i can say too good for me for a fleet of tat she's far good for me far good far too good for me i'll get my words right in a minute sorry this is one time i want to get this in one take what a fabulous car 230e soon be tax exempt i think and beautiful 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 car and it's the little things on this which i'll take you through on a video one day but it's the way the door shut at the back i mean i don't know if it's come out on the video but the way these it's just the, the solidity and the, and the workmanship beautiful beautiful car and then finally at least for this bit because i'll do snippets of the three missing cars in a minute is the the workhorse the one that takes all the all the crap all the dog food all the all the goats horses it's the one that's going to roll the paddocks later and it's a it's a great beast it's ultimately reliable in the seven years i think that we've owned it it's an isuzu d max 2.5 turbo diesel 
with some, by the way, some really, really, we bought some Yokohama Geolander tires, which are sort of road buyers, but really good off-road, really good tires. Bought them just before Christmas. They're really, really good. She's a proper workhorse. And um, if you want to see a video of that, let me know. I doubt you do. Um, but yeah, she's a good old vehicle. Getting quite old now, eight years old, believe it or not. So yeah, that is, that is the entire fleet in one go, or at least, at least 10 of them. Pick your favorite or pick your least favorite. If I had to pick one right now, I think I'd still go for the Safran. I love that car, love that car. Um, if I had to drive any car, maybe I'll do that next time. Maybe I'll do a video on different cars for different scenarios. Or maybe you could pick the next video. Um, if they don't move, they're gonna turn into great, great climbing frames for the goats. Right, we'll move on to another car to say goodbye to the fleet. Move on to another car that's actually in the back of one of the barns down here. Now, this has been here, we bought this car in 2011 and it's been in here, I think, shamefully since 2012. It's one of those, we'll get onto it one day, we'll get onto it one day and started, but we haven't finished. But I have, having said that, with the lockdown, this might be the opportunity to do something about it. No, not the Falcon Banana, the AX GT. I'm almost embarrassed to show you underneath that. Um, we have started, got as far as uh, removing the front wings, all the body panels and all, all the plastic panels and part of the interior. We stumbled because we couldn't get the seats out. The original plan was to get the seats out, took all the interior trim out, see how bad the floor is and, and go from there and do as much as we can here before sending it away to be well, had the shell blasted to see how bad it is it needs it needs work there's rust it's been rust it's been welded in the past but it is an ax gt and for that reason it's worth preserving it's got all its original number plates dealer stickers and every piece of glass on it it's got the original number plate on it which is quite bizarre and i'm talking all the way down to the rear lights and all the way down i think to the front lights um they're too dirty to show you but they are the, the, <laughs> They put, number, you remember the days when number people did number plate etching? Yeah, there we go. Just about see it. Yeah, so one day she will be done. And I don't mean that she'll never get done. She will get done and it'll be worth it. Maybe, maybe the next video I could reveal her, show you how bad she is and maybe do a, do a retro test on a Falcon Banana. So yeah, that is, that is the entire fleet. In a minute, I'll show you the ZX and then I'll introduce you to Elaine Beige as well. So yeah, this is going on far too long, isn't it? So I'll switch I, and before it, I want to make this under 20 minutes, so I'll switch. Thank you. Okay, so now I've wandered down to the garage for the penultimate car on the fleet. Bought this in 2012 um, from Fulham. Paid a thousand pound for it, which at the time seemed quite extravagant, but actually now I think it was money well spent. Although, as of this morning, it refused to start. So it's having to join the party in the garage. We'll switch on the lights to give it some dramatic. You can see, if, if you know your cars, you'll know that it's a ZX 16 valve. Um, again, low mileage. I think it's something like 50,000 now. When I, when I bought it, it was, um, I used it a lot. I used it an awful lot. I used it, used it for London trips. So every car launch I went on, I drove this up to Heathrow, Gatwick or whatever it was. So this was used a great deal. Um, it's been in the garage a while. It needs a bit. Um, it doesn't need a lot. It really needs an MOT and some bodywork. As you can see, the paintwork is pink in places and the bumper's not, not in the best of conditions. But you know, I said the Safran's my favorite car on the fleet. I think this is actually it. If I look at it, when I see it, I remember how much I adore this car. So it won't be long before this one's back on the road. Still sporting some of the old petrol block stickers, which you might be able to see, including a, an old PB sticker, which I might bring back. And the final member of the fleet, the biggest member of the fleet, the most beige member of the fleet, um, if you remember, is the FFB Classic, the Fiat motorhome, which is currently in lockdown. Um, put it in storage because the weather was so grim. Uh, can't get it back so it's um well it's undercover it's safe but it's not here so the big beige elaine beige camper machine 
isn't here. But you've seen a video on that before. I'll link to it at the end. So that's the end of the video. It's too long. Um, let me know what you'd like to see next. Which part of the, which member of the fleet would you prefer to see? My plan is to do a video on each car called why I bought a such and such. If you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments below. Or if you'd like me to disappear off the internet equally, let me know. Okay, thanks for watching. Stay safe. See you soon.